Sweden's decision to accelerate a layered radar architecture is not an abstract procurement story. It is a strategic refit of the nation's eyes and ears for a far harsher threat environment in Northern Europe. In recent weeks and months, Stockholm has tied together multiple strands of sensing, very long-range fixed arrays, long-range mobile warning, and agile medium-range systems, into a coherent sensor system. Vision explicitly designed to cope with faster weapons, smaller radar cross-sections, denser electromagnetic congestion, and the operational realities of NATO integration. The organizing idea is simple, survivable diversity. The implementation, however, has been anything but simple, and that is precisely why it matters. At the top tier of Sweden's sensing lattice sits the Smart L Multimission Fixed, a land-based long-range ASA radar acquired from Thales. The Smart L family's instrumented range, up to 2,000 kilometers, gives Sweden the reach to track air-breathing targets and even ballistic objects at ranges that push surveillance out beyond national airspace and deep into the broader Baltic and Arctic approaches. This is not just about seeing farther. It is about buying decision time in a theater where missile timelines are compressing and ambiguity is weaponized. Thales disclosed the Swedish order in July 2023, framing the system as a contribution to sovereign airspace awareness. In practice, it is a backbone sensor for national early warning that can also feed allied networks. To complement fixed very long-range coverage with a mobile long-range layer, Sweden has contracted for Lockheed Martin's TPY-4. The FMV confirmed a roughly 1 billion CK deal in early June 2025, with first systems delivering in 2027. Beyond the headline, two details are strategic. The TPY-4 replaces the aging PS-861 long-range set, and FMV stresses commonality with other NATO users, explicitly positioning interoperability as a capability in its own right. That combination, modernization plus alliance harmonization, speaks to Sweden's post-accession operating concept. National sensors that plug cleanly into a wider, resilient air picture. The medium-range tier is where Stockholm is building both mass and flexibility. In April 2025, Sweden ordered the Groundmaster 200 Multi-Mission Compact GM200MMC from Thales Nederland, with deliveries beginning in 2026. The GM200MMC is a highly mobile 4D AESA set optimized for multi-mission roles, ranging from very short-range air defense support to counter-battery and weapon-locating tasks. Its value is not only technical, it is logistical and tactical. Quick deployment times, compact footprint, and the ability to surge coverage to priority sectors as a crisis evolves. FMV has indicated that the GM200 MMC will replace the legacy PS871 2D coastal low-altitude surveillance radar, a significant qualitative leap that reflects Sweden's shift from niche coastal coverage to scalable mobile area defense. Crucially, Sweden has not bet on a single medium-range family. In June 2025, Saab announced an FMV order for the Giraffe 4A, roughly 1.4 billion SEK, with deliveries across 2026 to 2027. Giraffe 4A is a modern 3D ASA system with a strong pedigree in Swedish service and export. Its addition, alongside the GM200 MMC, deliberately spreads industrial and supply chain risk while giving the Swedish Armed Forces two distinct sensor lines to tailor against mission, geography, and signature environments. In a war that will demand sustained availability, redundancy is an operational virtue. If the hardware list is impressive, the software of strategy, the rationale, and the programmatic glue matters just as much. FMV's new sensor program has been publicly described as a response to lessons from Ukraine and the evolution of Russian strike complexes. The official line is strikingly candid. Sweden expects higher speeds, lower radar cross-sections, precision growth, and targets operating across wider altitude bands. It also expects a far more congested electromagnetic environment. Those are not marketing phrases. They are operational constraints driving design and doctrine. 
In that light, the layered mix of Smart LMMF, TPY4, GM200, MMC, and Giraffe 4A is not redundancy for its own sake. It is a deliberate blend of band diversity, beam agility, mobility, and persistence meant to preserve detection and tracking across the spectrum of modern threats. There is also a timing logic at work. The Smart L MMF order was placed before Sweden formally joined NATO, anchoring national early warning for a future alliance context. The GM200 MMC order in April 2025 begins the near-term refresh of medium-range capacity with deliveries as early as 2026, fast by European standards. The Giraffe 4A award in June 2025 stacks more medium-range depth on a similar timeline. And the TPY4, arriving from 2027, backfills the long-range mobile role as the PS861 bows out. Sequenced across 2025-2028, this cadence addresses the most perishable capability gaps first, while building toward a more capable long-range picture later in the decade. In practical terms, Sweden is trying to ensure there is no single down phase in national surveillance while old systems retire and new ones arrive. Interoperability is more than a slogan in this architecture. FMV emphasized that TPY4 has other NATO users, easing data formats, tactics, and sustainment learning curves. Thales GM200 MMC, already in service with allies, contributes a common language for short to medium range air defense and counter battery missions at the tactical edge. And the Smart L MMF, operated in naval and land variants across Europe, extends the shared recognized air picture into the strategic horizon including ballistic detection. The practical effect is a Swedish radar estate that is natively compatible with the Alliance's integrated air and missile defense philosophy. Multiple sensor types feeding fused pictures at different echelons, each able to survive partial attrition and continue contributing to the whole. None of this is free or frictionless. The budgetary signals, 1 billion SAK for TPY4, 1 billion SAK for GM200 MMC, and 1.4 billion SAK for Giraffe 4A, speak to a sustained, multi-year investment in national warning. The more subtle challenge is human. Training operators across different human-machine interfaces, ensuring maintainers can sustain two medium-range families, and writing doctrine that exploits each radar's strengths without creating stovepipes. The payoff, however, is resilience, a force that can blend fixed horizon sensors, long-range mobile warning, and fast-moving medium-range coverage can keep seeing even when parts of the network are degraded by weather, jamming, or strike. Strategically, this radar surge closes three gaps. First, it narrows the warning gap against ballistic and high-end cruise missiles, an explicit FMV concern. Second, it removes a mobility gap by replacing legacy coastal and long-range sets with systems designed to move and redeploy as the fight shifts, especially relevant for the island of Gotland and the long Swedish coastline. Third, it reduces an alliance gap, aligning Swedish data links, formats, and concepts with NATO users so that Sweden is not merely a consumer of the regional air picture, but a producer of high-value data at range. That last point is crucial for deterrence. The more Sweden can see and share early, the more credible the Alliance's response becomes upstream of a crisis. Looking ahead, the test will be integration and adaptation. Integration means fusing Smart L's deep look with TPY4's mobile long-range tracks and the GM200 Giraffe 4A's medium-range density into a single, quality-controlled picture that shooters can trust. Adaptation means continuously updating software, waveforms, and counter-countermeasures as adversaries iterate. Sweden's program managers have telegraphed precisely that mindset. Plan for higher speeds, smaller signatures, and contested spectrum, and build systems that can evolve through software as much as hardware. That is how you stay current against threats that refuse to stand still. If you found this analysis useful and want more serious, up-to-the-minute commentary like this, please support the channel, follow, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and consider donating to keep these deep-dive assessments coming. 
Your engagement helps us keep an independent, professional voice focused on the defense issues that actually matter. 